members, and I feel very blessed to have mom and a mother. You couldn't have asked for a better mom than her. Unfortunately, some of the younger people don't know mom the way she really was. You know, all they know is hi, darling. <laughs> yeah. Hi, sweetie. I'm you're pretty so pretty. pretty. Yeah, bless yeah. You're so pretty. <laughs> she was a nurturing, loving mother. I mean, as a daughter, I couldn't have. Oh, and by the way, I was her favorite daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better mom. I mean, we were very close. We, she was the kind that could talk to you about anything, and I just felt very, you know, very close to her our whole life. She loved to sew. She did lots of hobbies. She was an excellent seamstress. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in ninth grade, she made me 14 new skirts. Mm -hmm. My girlfriends all came over there looking at my closet. You have 14 skirts? We had to wear skirts to school at that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and where to school? I said, yeah, well. But I hated to stand there and she'd say, turn, turn, <laughs> while she was hemming it. But it was, it was fine. I made it through. Um, uh, my girlfriend said she was always the prettiest mom, and, and I felt kind of good about that because she was a beautiful lady, and they would always say, your mom's the prettiest mom we have. She's probably one of the youngest ones. Uh, she loved her gardening, and I remember when Annie or any of her friends would come over, they would walk around the garden, and here's my husband, and here's the roses, you know, and it was just so cute because they just loved it, and I learned to love gardening and, and have a nice garden myself and think of her every time I'm down in the world. Of course, she was an excellent cook. She made pizza before you could go out and call and order pizza. It was like pizza, you know, who would have heard of that? And she and Dad loved anchovies. And Rich and I were like, oh, they loved the anchovies on our pizza. But if only she could have had a franchise back in the day. Oh, Just yeah. think that we'd all be, you know, we'd have bought this place. <laughs> but anyway, so she did love to cook. Uh, I remember when Pat and I were working, We'd come home some nights from school, and you know what you all teachers here know, or anybody that works knows when you come home, you're tired, and you're working after dinner. We'd come home, and there'd be on the back step of our condo uh, some kind of soup that she had made homemade, and some bread, and you know, it was just so nice to touch on. She was always an excellent cook. She loved to make baked goods, and Eddie was really the baker, but Mom liked baked goods. She liked to make soup. She liked. She just loved to cook. Uh, she loved her hot. Hot chocolate and solitaire. Pat and I used to play solitaire. That was probably the last things that we remember is she would drive over every Wednesday and we would play solitaire and have dinner, triple solitaire. And she enjoyed that so much. Um, she loved the song Don't Worry, Be Happy. All right, when that came out. So we taped it for her and we put it in her cassette player. She couldn't figure out how to play it, so we always turn it on when she left from the house on Wednesday and she'd listen to it the whole way home. <laughs> Thank you. 
in mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. um, when I would go to visit mom, as you know, as the years went on, and, and she got, it was one of really enjoyable because you couldn't talk about anything. It'd be like she didn't know what year it was, what day it was, who was the president, and anything that was going on. It's just like, hi, honey. And she constantly wanted to walk down the halls of the place that she was at and shut everybody's door. And um, all the people in her unit were, had dementia, and so they had a lockdown unit. They couldn't get out, but they could walk around. But when I'd go to visit, they'd go, oh, your mom's not in the room. I think she's probably down in Mary's room. Because they would all just go in each other's rooms and lay down on their bed April knows this, because she worked with them. They'd just lay down. We'd be taking a nap over in Mary's room, or she had favorite rooms. And her job was to shut everybody's door. She would spend the day walking and shutting the door, and walking and shutting the door. Uh, the last year, last last summer when we came home, I finally thought, we are going to car. Could you turn yourself off? <laughs> <laughs> she played cards her whole life. Whether we played Rummy, we played 500, or Solitaire, we played Hearts, we played all these card games. I thought, well, you know, she played cards all these years. She's now 88 years old. Maybe she'll remember something about the cards. So I said, let's play more. So I got cards. I said, shuffle the cards, Mom. She used to call it shoveling the cards, and Brian used to play with her. Shuffle. So she shuffled them, and then I said, turn one over. Which is bigger, Mom? This one or this one? Then I maybe have to say the 10 or the 6. <laughs> and you'd see the little brain cells just kind of going and going around. The 10. Or she'd say the key. You know, she telling you it's the queen, but it was fun. And then I said, okay, now Mom, separate it. Put the blue ones here and the, put the blue ones here and the red ones here. And so it was fun because we could sit there for two hours. And she could play solitaire, and you could see her little mind thinking back over the last eight years of playing cards, whatever. And so it was, it was, it was very pleasant for me to go visit her because it wasn't just, what am I going to do now? And she always loved her Hershey bar, so I take her. Is that for me? Yes, mom, that's for you. Can I eat it now? Yes, mom. <laughs> so she eat that while we played cards, and it was, it was very enjoyable. Um, I already talked about you're so nice, and you have such pretty trees. Uh, with that, I just want to close, and if anybody else wants to go around the room, we'll say a couple words or things that you remember about her. Uh, we're going to go out in a little bit and have a toast for her and uh, let off Pam and George about some balloons, so we'll have a balloon launch and let the balloons go. So, anybody wants to say anything? Go ahead. I remember, and, and you just, it just dawned on me, and you made this connection, you talked about them liking the anchovies on a pizza. I remember being a child, and Candy and I were staying with Mima and Papa or something. Mm -hmm. They must have been out. They took us over to Uncle Ray and Aunt Donald's, and they ordered pizza. And I vividly remember eating something on a pizza that was really salty and disgusting. <laughs> That's what it is. I remember that. And being afraid, you know, I'm here with my grandparents, my great aunt, and uncle. I didn't want to say I didn't like it, so I made myself eat it. And I remember that. So that was. First time, first the only time I had anchovies, but I didn't know I was too little to like know that's what I was eating. That's what I was eating. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, like I can remember sitting in the house over on the <laughs> of the uh, oh, that was station. Over. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. yes. the yes. yes. we were all in a big living room. Yeah, I remember um, mom. Um, 
it's like Jan said, she was really a great mom. She, she took care of us. She did all the homemaker things. She was sort of like the Aussie here at Tiger Brain. Uh, but well, looking at the videos, I remember how much she enjoyed entertaining. You know, they did a lot of entertaining. You know, they had the uh, rec room set up, and they had what they called the big group come over, which were their friends, and they had elaborate um, parties with uh, costumes and so on. One was a Hawaiian theme. And uh, they come down the steps, and they're all showing off what they're wearing. And uh, I remember when the uncle was in drag. And <laughs> <laughs> but they had a lot of fun, obviously, back then. And, uh, yeah. But she was really, really um, just took care of us. And uh, I think the little things you remember, I can remember being down in the basement, and she's sewing. And I can remember, like, the two of your Clarks downtown. Just, oh. Oh. Like, just a little moment of time that you, you, you put in your mind. And every morning when it's time to get up, Get me out of bed, and then I can remember sitting by the, the heating register to warm up and she, while she got my hot chocolate ready and then see you know, for the day. And it was close enough so that I could actually walk home from uh, grade school for lunch. I didn't would eat in the cafeteria. A lot of times I'd just go home and she'd have something there for me. So she French was fries. really great. But lots of French, French fries. fries. <laughs> yeah, she, she would indulge me. She did a little, you know, well, I the French fries, so she would just let me have chicken and French fries if I, yep. I wanted to rock on. All that, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, and like Jan says, you know, time went on. And the big thing in her life, though, was when she moved uh, to the property where we are now, and, and it was a big transition because she wanted the garden. And that, that went really well, you know. I mean, she really enjoyed herself out there um, doing the vegetable garden, the huge flower garden. She was very engaged in life, you know, and just uh, she enjoyed all that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, was, it was really good. But, you know, slowly, I remember about the time I got married, it was that transition and then, you know, just sort of a slow taper. So it's been a long process. There's been a little low September for a, a lot of years. But mm -hmm. even as she just tapering off, she's sort of content. You know, I, I sense that uh, she was just happy where she was and mm -hmm. didn't seem, you know, uh, ill at ease right up to the end. You know, so that's sort of good. She was always a simple person and just kept plugging along. And uh, you know, that's, that's what I remember as a mom. And she shared uh, a lot of it with all of you. And you've been with us, you know, you can see since day one, we've all been together. And that's, that's yeah. pretty great to keep a family together that long. Yeah. So thank you all for, for coming to share this. She never told me for anything. You know my name is Pat, but I've been Pam. I was Pam for the last, for some reason, I turned into Pam. And it wasn't you, Pam, but I was just Pam, okay? And I can't believe that neither one of you brought up when she decided that she was going to save the rest of us from this world-ending situation that was going to happen. And she started hoarding food downstairs. So whenever we went over there, she would go, well, do you need any peanut butter? And you'd go downstairs, and there would be shelves of peanut butter. And there would be shelves. You could have anything you want. It was like going shopping. You'd get this bag, and you'd roll all this stuff in it, and then you'd take it home with her. Um, she was prepared. She had your first. She had your dad build all those shelves. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she was just sticking them in, in bags and bags and bags. And finally, Dad says, "All right, we got to organize this." And he built all those shelves. Yeah. And then uh, I discovered that uh, fruit cocktail will dissolve a can after about ten years. And it, starts, <laughs> it's, it starts oozing out, and uh, I can't, the canned meat got scary. You yeah. really couldn't. Keep no, you could. You could. Uh, <laughs> I remember when I first met her. I I wanted her to be my mom. It's not that I didn't love my mom, but my mom and I just didn't have the kind of relationship that I was able to have with Thelma. And uh, she, you know, she just did everything. And I was just very enamored with her, I guess. You know, she, I just thought she was the greatest person. And over the years, she never lost her ability to smile. Even when she lost her teeth, she still lost her smile. But, and she was, I really think that she was able to live in the moment. And when you said that she was content, I think that's why. She mm -hmm. just got to the point where, you know, if her basic needs were taken care of, she was, she was fine with it. That's it. And she, uh, she had a way of making people feel good. She, she would always compliment Absolutely. them and just, you know, they, they, in, the, in the nursing home, some people get argumentative and difficult, oh, yeah. but she was very easygoing. They all loved being around her because she was the easy only, to take care the of. The only time that she got argumentative when you tried to take her chocolate away. <laughs> <laughs> or you came to the picnic and you told her she didn't need 
17 scotcheroos, you know. <laughs> you know, she was bound and determined she was gonna eat what she was gonna eat. But, uh, yeah. She was a wonderful woman. She, she was. Yeah. Pat, I can relate to your feeling that you wish she was your mother, I mean, because I felt that a lot. I mean, she was my mother's sister, but there were many times when I thought, I wish she was my mom. And when I was going through those puberty years, <laughs> she, I used to babysit for the, the three snot-nosed kids, <laughs> Rich and Pam. When the couples were going out, I was the babysitter. Well, this one time I was babysitting there, and she saw that I was getting to a point where maybe I was going to be needing a bra. <laughs> and back in those days, they didn't have all the things for yeah. young girls that they have today. <clears throat> she took me up to her bedroom, and she had a drawer full of bras. <laughs> <laughs> and she went through this drawer and picked out one that she thought would be good for me, and she gave me that bra. Oh, and wow. that was something my mother and I had never talked about. Mm -hmm. And here she was aware that I was getting to that point. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, you know, it really touched me and I felt really good about it. And as I told you before, there was, she made me one of the most beautiful skirts I ever had in my life. I think it was angular. I don't remember, it was fuzzy. Mm -hmm. But it was gray. It was like variegations of gray. It was a stripe around this way. Oh, I love that skirt. I love that skirt. So those are some of the memories I have around town. Oh, and another thing. When I used to babysit, we never had ice cream in our house. Ever. There was never ice cream in the freezer. They always had ice cream. I was not going to the kids went to bed. So I could have some of that ice cream. <laughs> I have a memory of Aunt Thelma. This was at a time when George was unemployed. He had lost his job. And we had three little kids. And Aunt Thelma came over to our house with a freezer full of meats that she had taken out of the freezer. And before she left, she handed Gregory a bell into his hand. The couples would get together. She was always immaculately dressed. You talk about making the clothes. Her dresses were, were incredible. She was one beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. Incredibly beautiful woman. She used to make. She wore me a mess. She used to make coats. Yeah, I oh, made her own coats, and she would put a label in there. I have one of the coats too. Yeah, hmm. and they were. You would never believe they were homemade. They were so beautiful. Wow. You remember the gray one, Jan? It's like a little short of tape. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a fuzzy design. It's really kind of Did mom have that? I, she must have. That's what I got ended up with it, but I, I have it still. Mm. What, what does it? What, what kind of a label does it have? It's Whatever, I don't know what it says on the label. But, but she would put uh, like an O'Neill's label or mm -hmm. something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she would put it on here. People didn't know it was a whole thing. Yeah, so oh, it was no, always in her name. No, it wasn't her name. It was something no. else, so people didn't know it was a whole thing. Uh, oh, you could not tell. They were beautiful. How did she deal with your dad being so involved with sports? Is that when she sewed or something? Because your dad and I would go to ball games and just read her. She would read. She loved to read and he yeah, hated when she read. Oh. So he would go to his games and she would read. Yeah, she oh. loved to read. Okay. She also croquets too, didn't she? She did a lot of things. She had lots of And the topiary dreams. Topiary dreams. Yeah, topiary dreams. Yeah. Topiary oh, dreams. Yeah. Everybody got a topiary oh, dream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember Christmas one year, I remember. Mine was like a week with Willow. Yeah. 